Hello everyone and welcome to Tea Time with Chloe. If you are new to these videos on my channel, um, Tea Time with Chloe is basically where I just sit and answer people's questions or I chat about a specific topic. Lots has been going on in my life, our lives, over the last couple of months and I thought that people might have questions. Um, first of all, I am in my new kitchen. I want to see if I can get a better filming setup going in here. Um, but for now, this is where I am. And I'm also sorry if it's echoey. Um, there's a lot of furniture in here, but it's still really echoey. So I don't think there's really anything I can do about that. I do not have sophisticated filming equipment or anything like that. So obviously, um, we are in lockdown at the moment, so in the UK. So I hope that everyone is doing okay. Um, but we have had our new kitchen done, as you can see, and you will have seen the process of that from beginning to end if you follow the weekly vlogs. Um, we are also getting a new puppy. Um, we are still um, grieving. Um, for those who don't know, we unfortunately suffered a miscarriage uh, in December, so we're still processing all of that and trying to get through that with new challenges thrown in at the moment to try and process and um, I had my vaccine on Saturday, my first Covid vaccine, so I just thought that it might be a time in which people had a lot of questions um, because my weekly vlogs are not as detailed as they used to be, I'm not filming loads every week at the moment, so I thought I would just give people an opportunity to ask some questions and we will see how it goes. Um, so this is actually at the top of my second sheet of questions, but I feel like it would probably be the best one to answer first. It just says, how are you? And I remember um, the girl who asked me, she said, don't just say I'm fine. Like we actually want to know how you are. Um, so I, like my reflex is just to say I'm fine because today I'm not feeling so terrible, but on the whole, I have been struggling a lot recently. So that was a very deep question. Basically, I'm fine. <laughs> no, honestly, like day to day, I'm feeling um, a lot better um, and I'm learning to sort of deal with grief in new ways, but sometimes something comes along and it just rips off all of those plasters that you've, you've stuck over it. Um, and it just reveals a whole new layer of grief that you weren't expecting or you, you weren't prepared for. Um, and if anyone is going through a miscarriage or has been through it years ago, but just feels like they haven't dealt with it um, or are still struggling with those feelings day to day, I would really recommend a book that I read recently called The Baby Loss Guide by Zoe Clark. Um, a lot of it is just common sense and actually I think it's really helpful for you to read if you're trying to support somebody through a baby loss. But there is some stuff in there that just really spoke to me and, and made me think about it a little bit differently and um, has helped me to come to terms with not necessarily what happened to me because I feel like you, d you never really come to terms with it or accept it. This is going to be something that I carry forever but it's helping me to deal with and accept new situations that are coming up now. Um, and it's helping me have hope for the future. So that was a very long-winded tangent of an answer, but you wanted to know how I'm really doing. <laughs> and that was it. One question that I got over and over and over again was, um, are we renovating more in 2021 or what is our next house project? So we don't have any more plans for big renovations um, on this house in general. I really love where this house is and obviously our new kitchen space is amazing. It's what I, you know, everything I dreamed it would be. Um, but this is not our forever home. So our plan is not to put um, thousands and thousands more into this house. We feel that if we are lucky enough to have children that will outgrow it quite quickly because the upstairs space isn't great. Um, so we don't have plans for any more big renovations. However, we are getting new carpet um, for the hall stairs and landing uh, because we've still got the original carpet down there from when we moved in and it's awful. Um, and new carpet in Will's office, which is our second bedroom upstairs. 
Um, he has got a long wish list of furniture that he wants to buy for that office that he's started collecting so that he can make it into a proper like office and gaming room. Um, at the moment it's all mismatched furniture and it's all all over the place. Um, so other than that and repainting the upstairs toilet, we don't really have any more plans for this house. So little odd, odd jobs around the house. Um, and new carpet ups in some of the upstairs space is like the only thing that we have left to do, um, apart from lighting. So the lighting in this house is awful and we really need new lighting in pretty much every room. Um, so that will be done at some point. But yeah, no more big renovations for us in this house. Someone else on Instagram asked, what is your favorite kind of day? And, um, I didn't have to think too hard about this at all. I don't know if this would have been my normal answer, but during COVID times, all I want at the moment is to do some sort of adventuring. Um, so not necessarily a holiday, but my favorite kind of day is when Will and I pack the dogs into a car and we just drive from place to place, enjoying nice food, taking the dogs out on a little adventure and just enjoying each other's company. So we do normally do this when we're on holiday. Um, like when we go camping or we go to the caravan, we just look up a few places that we want to visit that day and we just get in the car and go. And that's definitely one of my favorite kind of days. And I wish more than anything that I was doing that at the moment. What are you looking forward to most post COVID? Um, I think like a lot of people, I just really want to be able to freely see my family again. Um, my parents aren't really like tech savvy people, so we don't like FaceTime or anything like that. Um, so if I don't see them in person, I don't see them. And my mum is still working in a school. So for half of the week, I can't even reach her by phone. Um, and I am like best friends with my mum. I pre-covid um i would see her multiple times a week um my friends all work full time and because of my health issues by the time the evening comes around i'm often shattered um so instead of you know having multiple sort of social events during the week with my friends i would i'd see my mum like all the time um at least once or twice a week we would meet up for lunch sometimes we would like go to starbucks and sit and get lunch and just put the world to rights or um, I would go around her house, we would do like afternoon tea, um, we would just sit out in her summer house in the summer and just drink tea and chat about everything. And I miss that so much. Like I was walking to the post office the other day and I just thought to myself, you know, when was the last time I met up with mum for lunch after work? Like, I just don't know when it was. Like the last time we actually went out for lunch, it's got to have been like, I don't know, it's got to have been like a year ago. And I just, that makes me so sad. Um, so yeah, for me, being able to just see my family is a big thing. Um, and my grandparents, like I miss my grandparents so much. And a couple of weeks ago, well, it might have even been a couple of months ago now. Yeah, it must have been, because it was just after Christmas. I went and dropped uh, the Christmas present for my grandparents on their doorstep. And I was having a chat to my nan and I had a mask on and it was cold outside and raining and I was stood on the doorstep like talking to her and I just thought this feels so unnatural. Like I just want to go in and give my nan a hug. Like I haven't hugged her in, I don't know how long. Like I just don't know how long. And it just feels so unnatural to not be with my family all the time and be, you know, giving them a hug and everything. And it's... It's just weird. So that's what I'm looking forward to most post COVID. Obviously holidays are lovely, restaurants are great, but I just want to be with my family normally. What is your favorite part of the new kitchen? Um, I don't think I have like a favorite part of it. I love all of it. Um, my favorite new appliance is the fridge because the fridge is a thing of beauty. But I think my favorite aspect of the new kitchen is just that everything is together in the same room now, which makes so much more sense to me. Um, so previously our kitchen was really small and we couldn't have a table in there. It was like, um, it was a galley kitchen, I guess, but wider and we couldn't have a table in there and the table was in the 
living room, my dresser with all my Emma Bridgewater was in the living room. And it just always felt so weird to me to have like kitchen stuff in the living room. Um, and I just love that everything is now in one space, you know, like everything to me now is where it's meant to be. And I love it. And I love that it means it's opened up more space in the living room too. Because obviously now that that furniture's all out of the living room, we've got um, a bookcase in the living room now. We've got a lovely big comfy armchair in the, book, in the um, little book corner of the living room. And it just feels a lot cosier in there. That room feels like it makes more sense now. And to me, it just feels so nice to have everything sort of where it's meant to be. Okay, so Will came home from work and it's actually been a really long time. And I'm now coming back to filming this video. Um, I have no idea where I got up to, so I'm just gonna have a quick look. I have no cup of tea anymore because it went cold. So I'm sorry if the angle and the lighting and everything has changed. Um, let me have a look at the questions. I think the one I got up to was the best memory of 2020. Um, 2020 was obviously not great, but um, three memories do stand out. Um, going to Florida, so seeing the Walt Disney World sign for the first time in February 2020. Obviously getting married in August 2020 and finding out I was pregnant in November 2020 are three memories that are very special. Um, Finding out I was pregnant was amazing, but probably telling Will was the best. Next one, when you're stressed, how do you relax? Um, I, at the moment, I watch a lot of um, like easy to watch TV. Um, I'm normally a reader. I read a lot in January and now we're like more than halfway through February and I haven't read a single book. Um, I, my brain has been just too busy even to read this month, so um, I've been watching a lot of TV. I've been watching Married at First Sight Australia, which I love. Um, Will and I are like coming up to halfway through season six. Um, and that was the first season of the Australian show that I had watched. So um, I watched season six with Will because he's gotten into it as well. But now I've gone back today and started watching season four from the beginning. So I'll watch season four and five and then we'll carry on watching six together. Um, this next girl on Instagram said that she really wants a dog, but she finds that dogs are really expensive at the moment. And she's asked, was our new puppy expensive? So for those who missed it, we are getting another puppy at the end of March. She's a chocolate dapple miniature dachshund and I'm obsessed with her. The breeder is amazing. She was, well, I say she was recommended to me. I was actually recommended to the breeder by um, a mutual friend. Um, and because she knew me, she knew the dogs, I was experienced with Dachshunds, she was able to recommend me to her breeder who very kindly um, put me on her list and a puppy was born for me in her next litter. Um, she didn't have loads of people waiting because she's not like a big time breeder, she's just a hobby breeder with a couple of dogs um, and she prioritises the new owner and their home over anything else. So um, if somebody comes along who's the perfect home, she'll prioritize them over somebody that she's not quite sure about. And thankfully we really clicked and um, she put me straight to the top of her list, which I was so grateful for. Um, but the, the answer is yes, the puppy is expensive, but nowhere near as expensive as other puppies that I'd inquired about. I looked for a puppy for a really long time. I've also been on the waiting list with Dachshund specific rescues for about four years now and never had any luck. Um, the fact that we're a young couple that wants children because they do ask you about these things and the fact that we have an unneutered dog in the house are immediate strikes against us. Um, the puppy is expensive. I've saved for two years to be able to buy a puppy. Everything to do with the dogs I pay for myself. They are mine. They are in my name. I buy everything for them, including them. So I am buying the puppy. I've saved for two years to be able to do so. And yes, she is expensive. It's more than I would have paid if we had got a new puppy a year ago, but to me it's worth it. And yes, dogs are expensive at the moment because too many inexperienced people are buying them just because we're in lockdown. There's a few questions about Winnie. Somebody's asked, how is Winnie doing? And somebody else asked, 
Uh, is there anything left on Winnie's bucket list? Um, there are a few things left on Winnie's bucket list, but because she was doing so well, we decided to space them out a little bit because it became obvious that we were gonna have more time with her than we thought, so we could enjoy them um, over a longer period of time. There's only a few things left on her list though, so we're gonna have to go back and redo some of them. Um, in terms of how she's doing, she most days she's doing really well, like you still just wouldn't even know that she was poorly. Um, the reason we discovered the cancer was because a lump suddenly came up on her face in October of 2020. Took her straight to the vet, she had biopsies, x-rays and everything, and unfortunately it was uh, melanoma in her mouth. So it's a form of skin cancer and it was in her mouth and the lump on her face was a tumour, but she had patches of it all inside her mouth. Um, and at that time it hadn't spread anywhere else. Um, and basically our treatment options were really limited. They said that nothing was going to cure her, it, it was terminal, and the only options were to like remove the whole of her bottom jaw and then put her through chemo and then put her through immunotherapy. And I would never take a dog's jaw because how are they going to eat properly? Um, I, it's just not what I was going to do, um, especially because it wasn't going to cure her. So we decided to go down the route of holistic treatment and she was doing amazingly and the tumour actually disappeared, completely shrunk back to nothing. There was nothing there. Um, so I left it a couple of weeks um, before sharing that, like on her Instagram page or on my Instagram page. And now I feel like I've jinxed myself because this past week I have noticed a slight bump come back on her face. So I feel like the tumour is coming back. Um, the cancer was particularly aggressive, so I don't know if maybe we just stopped it in its tracks for a bit with all of these sort of natural methods and now it's coming back. Um, what I will say though is that the progress that she made um, and how well she's doing has made me believe a lot more in natural methods um, and I've researched them a lot more and um, I feel confident that we've made, we made the right decision for her even though I do think there is a little bit of a bump coming back on her face now, they told us that we would be lucky to have her by Christmas and that definitely by January she would be ready to go. And obviously we are now more than halfway through February and she's still pretty much completely her normal self. So I feel we made the right decision. We've had an extra, what, October, November, December, January, February, another four months with her, um, being her normal self, being happy and, that's all you can ask for really. So we're just gonna continue in the same vein for however long she is happy and comfortable for. Um, but I'm very grateful that she is still here. Do you have any realistic plans for this year? Crafty plans or anything like that? The question was a bit longer. I think she had given me some examples of stuff I could talk about, but I didn't write them all down. Um, but basically realistic plans for this year, we haven't made any. Um, we literally haven't made any plans for this year. Um, I, I've just sort of lost all ability to plan for the future really. We were supposed to be having our vow renewal in April, obviously that's not happening, but do you know, I realised I haven't really let anyone know that it's not happening, so I'm sure they can all assume, but I'm gonna have to get into contact with people and tell them it's not happening. Um, anyway just realised that I should probably tell all of our friends and family that it's not happening. Um, my brother and his fiancée are meant to be getting married, there's some other stuff happening um, in the family this year but nothing that requires any sort of like plans on our part. Yeah, we literally haven't made any plans. We've said that there are things we might like to do, so if we can get a camping trip in in the summer we'd like to do that. Um, we literally haven't made any plans at all. I think it's really sad. I hate not having plans, but yeah, we don't, we literally don't have any. And in terms of crafting, I'm not really crafting very much at the moment, so I haven't made any plans for that. Oh, that's not a very good answer, is it? But that's an honest one. I've literally not planned anything for this year. <laughs> Are you going to be making book related videos again? Um, I get this one a lot and no, because I read far too sporadically to ever make book related videos. Um, I read 14 books in January and I've read none in February. That gives you an idea of why I don't make 
book related videos anymore but also I'm just I still love reading just not particularly interested in book related content anymore I don't really watch anyone's book related content anymore I find that I get um sucked into stuff quite easily and when I was consuming a lot of book related content I was buying a lot of books and I just can't afford to do that now um I would rather spend my money on other things because I have a lot of unread books um but I, I just don't find it particularly interesting so I'm sorry but no I, I won't be making book related videos again at least f now does puppy have a name um yes so I really struggled to pick a name for her I wanted to wait until she was a little bit older to see what she looked like she's a dapple she's a chocolate dapple which means her base color is chocolate brown and then she has lots of patches of light brown and then the sort of traditional um, orangey markings of a dachshund um, however she's actually got um, lots and lots of dapple on her um, so she's actually more sort of like blonde than brown um, and it's, it's almost like she's that blondy sort of caramel colour with just a, some patches of chocolate thrown on. So I couldn't, I can't really predict what she's going to look like when she gets bigger. Um, often they have a lot more chocolate brown on their face and she doesn't have that much. It's mainly sort of over one eye. So I can't really predict what she's going to look like. I wanted to wait until you could see more of her personality and how she looks and stuff. Um, and I had a couple of names on my list that I really liked. Um, about six months ago, I decided that when I got another Dachshund, she would be called Betsy. Just think it's adorable, but Will isn't keen on it because he can't imagine taking her out on a walk and calling for Betsy. Um, and there were a few other names that were kind of like that. So um, like Dolly, Nancy, um, they were sort of all in the same vein. Like he couldn't really imagine calling them on a walk, which is fair enough. Um, they are quite cutesy names. Um, and then there were a couple of other names that I really liked, um, like Nelly and um, Olive. But um, Nelly just didn't feel quite right. It was one of the names that I had when we got Winnie. So to me, it just didn't feel quite right. Um, and then Olive, nearly every single dachshund puppy that i know of at the moment is called olive and uh, the breeder her last litter one of those puppies is called olive um, i also liked dotty but one of her previous puppies is also called dotty and we're actually all in a group chat together which is so nice um and so many of my names um have already been used by previous puppies so i thought it'd be nice to have something different um but the name that i have loved ever since she was born um, is Margot. And I realized the other night that all along in my head, that's what I'd been calling her. I'd been calling her Margot. So to anyone else, I'd been calling her the puppy or just her or she, but in my head, she'd been Margot from the beginning. And the breeder had said she didn't like it as much as some of my other names. And my mum kept pushing me to use the name Dolly. So I think that um, I just kept thinking, oh no, like maybe other people don't like it, but, I don't care anymore. Margot is my favourite. To me, she feels like a little Margot. It's different to Archie and Winnie. It doesn't have that E sound on the end, which I like because I think Archie, Winnie and Margot sounds cute. Um, and unfortunately, if we do lose Winnie, um, Archie and Margot still sounds cute. So I just thought it would be a little bit different. And I do know of a few Dachshunds called Margot, but um, I just think it's adorable. I like it for a baby, but it's a little bit out there for me for a baby so yes she's gonna be called Margot and now I've said it in this video I need to announce it on my social media what are your current Netflix favorites um, I'm not really watching Netflix that much at the moment I've just finished Dawson's Creek last week or the week before which I really enjoyed Pacey forever um, and I also just watched the latest um, To All The Boys I've Loved Before film. It's the last one in the trilogy, um, Always and Forever, Lara Jean. And it was so cute. So if you want a lighthearted trilogy of films to watch, watch the um, To All The Boys trilogy on Netflix. I've read the books as well, which are also very cute. Um, but I'm mainly watching stuff on um, like on demand websites at the moment. So I've been watching Married at First Sight on all four um, and been watching a lot of documentaries on like BBC iPlayer and stuff. So 
that's what I'm preferring to do at the moment. What's your current favorite pair of socks? <laughs> I don't have a favorite pair of socks, I don't think. I just grab whichever ones are closest at the moment. However, these are my new slippers that I got for Christmas. And now that the house is finished, I can finally wear them and I love them. They're just Primark, but they're adorable. Pom-poms, and I wanna get wear out of them before the puppy comes home, because she'll probably tear them apart. <laughs> How and when did you know that Will was the one? There was a second part to this question as well that was something like, um, did the way love is presented in films and books, did that um, affect your approach to dating or something like that? I did actually make a video on that topic years ago, I think in like 2014, um, about how love in like young adult um, films and books particularly is really unrealistic. Um, and that that could affect young girls' opinions on relationships and put unfair expectations on people. Um, but I don't think it ever really affected my view of dating or how I dated people. I, um, I just had certain things that I expected and um, a certain way that I expected to be treated. And if you didn't treat me that way, then bye. And if you did, then great. I don't know about like when knowing somebody's the one. I don't remember a particular moment. Um, I remember when I first told him I loved him and I don't really know why I chose that particular moment because it hadn't been a very good night actually. Um, but that's a different story. Um, but I don't know, it's, for me, it's definitely something that actually grew over time. I don't remember there being a specific moment where I thought like this guy is the one but he has shown over and over again, especially in the last few years, um, that I definitely didn't make any bad choices when it came to uh, being with him. So, yeah. Last question that I'm gonna answer today. What is your dream job? Um, I actually spoke about this on Instagram recently because someone asked me in a Q&A on Winnie's account, um, and my dream job would be to be a dog walker or somebody that offered like pet sitting services. Um, and I would really love to do it, but um, the financial burden of setting up and trying to get it off the ground puts me off every time and fear of the unknown. It's great to be your own boss. However, um, it's expensive to set things up. Um, with something like dog walking, you would need specific insurance, you would need a van um, that was properly decked out to um, transport dogs. Um, it would be, you know, difficult to find the right clients because obviously if I'm going to have a job walking dogs all day, I'd want to be able to take my dogs with me, but then you'd have to make sure they got on with the dogs you were walking. Obviously, you'd be responsible for one of the most important things in somebody's life. You know, I wouldn't trust anyone else with Archie and Winnie other than my parents and my brothers. So, I don't know. I just feel like the fear of the unknown and like the stress of setting it all up puts me off every single time, but that is what I would love to do. Either that or working in a zoo. I would love to be a zookeeper. I would love it. As you can tell, I'm not particularly driven by money. <laughs> Most of my dream jobs do not have any money in it and neither does the job that I currently do. Um, I just like to enjoy myself. That is it for today. Thank you for asking me all of these questions. I've enjoyed answering them. We had a mixed bag of questions today. If you have any more um, or you think you asked me a question that I missed, then leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Sorry if you can hear Winnie snoring in the background and Archie pottering around. Um, they're always in the same room as me somewhere. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're all well and I'll see you next time. Bye.